There has been a recent development in the Tangara replacement plan, officially the Future Fleet Program. Expressions of interest for different aspects of the trains have opened, and alongside some limited additional clarity has been given to the rest of the project. In this video, I'll attempt to briefly explain the new information, uh, but please bear in mind that a lot of the information here is quite flowery and vague, and borders on being meaningless. Uh, but this is to be expected, as the project is barely off the ground. The timeline for the FFP has been revealed, with the replacement of the 445 Tangara cars slated to begin in 2030, the 140 Millennium and 221 Oscar cars in the 2040s, and the 952 Waratah cars, both of the A and B sets, in the 2050s. To achieve this, a business case will be prepared by, and expressions of interest will close, at the beginning of 2026, with contracts being awarded between then and the start of construction in 2027. Infrastructure modifications will be completed before the first train enters service in 2030. The government will work closely with industry to increase the benefits to New South Wales and ensure a realistic delivery speed. To fulfil its promise of supporting local manufacturing, the New South Wales Government will aim to award half of the rolling stock contracts to New South Wales businesses, with a 30% weighting on local content in Contract Evaluation Criteria. Simply put, this means contracts from local firms using local products will be viewed more favourably. Local employment will be a focus of the programme, ensuring skilled jobs in the New South Wales railway manufacturing and maintenance industries are created and preserved. We still don't have many details about the fleet, as this information will be finalised in business cases in due course. Vague remarks about increasing comfort, sustainability, accessibility, reliability and efficiency have been made. Additional remarks were made regarding the efficiencies generated by design innovation and using an interactive design process building upon proven designs. The programme aims to optimise and integrate the network, fleet, maintenance and facilities to increase the economy of scale of these aspects. Again, some very flowery language. $10 million was allocated to early works of the programme in the 2023-24 state budget, with this likely to be ramped up in the coming years. The government is currently mapping the supply chain with industry and engaging with them on design and procurement. Make sure to subscribe for further short update videos on the FFP and other major projects as I see fit going forwards. This video won't replace April's videos, so there's still that to look forward to too. At some point I might get around to watching some Parramatta Light Rail or Sydney Metro City and Southwest testing, so there may be some bonus videos at some point as well. That's it for now, have a nice day and goodbye.